All right, so I'm starting the new part. Front plane, rectangle, smart dimension. Okay, so we need to link. We need to provide a value for the side. So, uh, we need to provide a variable for the first side. So this is still in millimeters. Let me change it to inches. Okay, so I'm gonna double click on it. You say equals double quotations a. Okay, and you'll see that there's a globe with a star that pops up next to it, which allows you to create a global variable. So you can use that A in other dimensions. And you go ahead and click enter. It tells you do you want to use this as, as a variable name? You say yes. And now what just happened is you, you see this globe in front of the number. So you're linking that variable A to that number. So if I go ahead and type 2 here, basically A is equal to 2. Because if you just click on that, if you toggle it, you'll see that this globe means equal A. Okay, so let's go ahead and click check mark. Now I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to say smart dimension as well. I'm going to say equals three multiplied double quotation A. So what I'm basically saying is that this side, no matter what, is always going to be three times this side. So if I go ahead and click check mark, okay, you'll see that now it's equal to six. So let's go ahead and change the first side instead of being two if I change that to one you'll see how the other side will change automatically okay now where are all these equations managed in the equations tab over here under your design feature tree so if you click on the plus sign you'll see that you have a global variable here called a equals one just like when we did in MATLAB you had like um, workplace where all the variables were stored that's kinda of the same deal I can right click on this I can click on manage equations and over here you can see that the global variables are A and that the value of A currently is 1. Okay, and I can see other equations related to that. So I can see how uh, dimension 2 in sketch 1 is 3A. That's why it's calculated at 3 inches. Is that clear? By the way, you can do also many different things. So it's not as straight, it doesn't have to be as straightforward as this. Uh, for example, you can use sines, cosines, all that stuff to specify, and you can also do angles. Um, the whole idea is you can link sides together, and we'll do an exercise on that for your homework. Okay? Is that clear? Any questions? Now, what you'll notice that you can, what you try to do is if you click on extrude boss base, and you try to specify the depth of that extrude boss base to be A. So if you just type A, for example, in the depth, okay, you're going to get an error that says, please enter a number. And then if we try to put equals double quotations A, Okay, and you try to hit check mark for that one, you'll also get that. And then some people try without the equal, and you'll get this. So, what you'll realize is that the equations are mainly used just for sketches. So, it can be done only a 2D plane. That's why you cannot link that third dimension. So, if you want to extrude that by a specific distance, we're just going to have to type it up. I'm just going to type 1, and that's how we get our box. Is that clear? Any questions on that? Okay, so when we started, I'm just going to go back to the original sketch here. When we started, some of you could have done this. So how many of you, when you drew your rectangle, you actually went to this corner? And then probably some of you went to this corner, right? Some of you did this corner. Some of you went to this corner. How about some of you that actually did this? They were even using center rectangle. Okay. So some of you could have done that. Does that make so each one of you is going to have a different approach? And my my question to you is, okay, well now I'm just going to draw my rectangle somewhere here, and if I okay, I deleted the side, so the equations are freaking out right now. Um, Okay, so if I have this and I'm trying to tell you, hey, let's go ahead and find the mass, the volume, the location of the center of mass. Now, depending on your origin, and if you want to see where their origin is located, all you have to do is just go to View, Origins, and you can see that my origin in isometric view is located over here. Your origin could be somewhere here, could be here, could be at a different location. Now, the question is, let's go ahead and, ass and assign a material for this. So under Materials, I'm just going to choose 1060 Alloy. 
So I click on Materials 1060 Alloy. Okay, you can choose any material you want. It doesn't have to be 1060 Alloy, but the deal is when I go to Evaluate and I try to do Mass Properties, Okay, and again, I forgot to mention that some of you, because we learned this last time, some of you could have extruded midplane, right? So your your vertex is really not at any of those corners. So <laughs> the question is, if I go to mass properties right now and I try to run this, we should all have the same mass, okay? We should all have the same volume. We should have the same surface area. But the location of the center of mass is going to be different. So let me actually go back and dimension this correctly. So all of us are on the same page. So you guys have this as 3 and this is 1. Okay, so try to put it as 1 and 3. Okay. All right, so what is the mass that you get? Uh, if you're using 1060 alloy, by the way. Do you get 0 0.29? What's the volume? Do you get 3? Okay. Now, what's the center of mass? How many of you get x is negative 1.5? How many of you get y is 0 0.5? And how many of you get z is 0, point, uh, 0? Okay. So you'll see that if I'm going to go ahead and grade your assignment, there's no way for me to actually have all these dis different scenarios. Correct? Because you're going to have a different number than me because you probably start your part differently. And I cannot force you to, to do your parts in a specific way. So how do we actually do these calculations that, so that we all end up with the same number? And you'll see this pink one over here. That's where the center of mass is located. So let's say for some reason I want you to calculate the center of mass with respect to this vertex. So now we're all on the same page that it needs to be done with respect to this point. So go ahead and select that point in the back. Okay, so now what I need to do is I'm going to go to Features, Reference Geometry, okay, and we're going to click on Coordinate System. Do you see how a new coordinate system was formed in the back? Okay, and using those arrows for X and Y, you guys know that X cross Y gives you Z, right? The three three finger rule or the curly finger rule or whatever you want to call it rule okay you know that x cross y gives you z that's why you cannot modify the direction of z but I always recommend that you follow the direction of the tripod here on the bottom so x y z looks in the same direction so we're looking good I'm just going to go ahead and click check mark so notice what I just added just similar to adding a plane I just added the new coordinate system okay so now when I go ahead and do my evaluate mass properties Instead of selecting, where, do you see over here where it says Output Coordinate System Default? Instead of selecting the default coordinate system, I can click on the drop down and I can actually select the new coordinate system that I created. So I can click on that and now we should hopefully all have the same, <coughs> we should hopefully all have the same location for our center of mass 1.5, negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5. You guys agree? Do all of you have this? And that's how we're going to grade your certification exam. Okay? If your mass, volume, XYZ match mine, that means you're doing it right. Okay? Is that clear? Okay, now let's say for some reason you want your uh, coordinate system to be uh, right here. Okay? In the, middle, in the middle of this point. Okay? So what do you do? It's very simple. You just go to this plane. You create a sketch. And that sketch, you just put a point wherever you want that coordinate system to be. Okay, and that point could be anywhere. It could be the center of the, the whole thing, really. Okay. So I'm going to click check marks. So notice I have a point here. Now I can click on that point. Again, same process. Features, reference geometry, coordinate system. There you go. New coordinate system. Check mark. And now when I, go, when I do my mass properties, I can select if I want coordinate system 1 or coordinate system 2. Okay, and I can do that as well. Is that clear? Any questions on that? Okay.
Okay, so we talked about this, mass properties, equations. Um, I want to show you one more thing. Remember that wheel mechanism that we talked about before? That The one that you got so excited and you were spinning and, and all that stuff? Remember how those plates were actually saved as different configurations under the same part? So how do we do that? It's actually not um, not that um, not that difficult. Let's say this is this is a beam, okay? And this beam is, um, you know, one of those. Be this beam is a standard beam. It doesn't have any holes through it. There's another beam that has one hole through it. There's a second beam that has two holes through it, right? So how do we do that? If this is the standard beam, now all I have to do is the third tab over here. On the top, it says Configuration Manager. I'm going to click on it, and you're going to see it says Default uh, default um, Part 3. So I'm going to right-click on the main header. So not on Default. I'm going to click on the main header. I'm going to click on Add Configuration. Okay, I'm going to call this Beam with One Hole. Okay, I'm going to click check mark. Yes. So now notice how default got grayed out. Because now all the changes that you do are only being done to beam with one whole part. So now there are kind of like two parts inside that. So if I go back to the first tab to my design tree, and if I just click on the front face and I click normal to, I'm just going to go ahead and add, add a hole over here. I don't really care about the dimension because I'm just trying to show you configuration and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, extrude cut this through all okay so if you want to do whole wizard fine if you want to do just a regular circle extrude cut that's fine too is that clear now I'm gonna to go to the third tab again and I'm gonna click on the first Piece, and I'm going to also add, add, I'm going to also click on add configuration. And I'm going to call this beam with two holes. Okay, so notice how beam with one hole and default are now grayed out. And I'm also going to go to the first tab and I'm going to click on the front plane and I'm going to add one more hole somewhere here and just extrude cut that through all. Okay. Does everyone have this? Okay, so look at this. Go to the configuration tab and double click on beam with one hole. You see how you just go to that? Double click on default. Okay? So what just happened? Let's go back to the first tab while while you while you're in default. Do you see how cut extrude 1 and cut extrude 2 are suppressed? So they're there, they're just suppressed. Okay, and you can do this with different lengths. For example, if you have a conveyor belt that's 5 meters, 10 meters, 15 meters. So instead of creating three different parts, you can do just one part and save it as a different configuration. And when you bring this into an assembly, you can load that specific configuration. Okay, so that's the cool thing about those plates because they were all done under one part. I just had to cut one piece out of the one, add another piece, and I, would, I was able to save them all as one. Are we good? Any questions? So as I said, today's lecture is pretty straightforward and uh, and easy. So this is this is it. Okay. So let me show you the homework.